Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about how functions work in Python. To give you a little bit of an overview, we're going to describe what functions are, why they're useful, uh, how we build them. And then once we have that, we'll look at how do we get information or variables into a function so that it can do a certain job. Finally, we'll examine once we have the function computing some information or getting some input from the user, how do we then get that information from our function back into our program? So let's dive right in. Generally, the simplest way that I can think of it to describe a function is it's a way of saying, go off and perform a task and then return. So you're basically asking a small portion of your program to be uh, put into a almost like a block. And then whenever you want to use that block or use those functions, uh, you just call the, the function that you wrote and it'll go and do whatever you've pre-programmed it to do. So it's almost like a reusable um, chunk of code. Using functions allows us to take our otherwise unwieldy source code, which is going to get bigger and bigger as we write more and more programs, and, and make it into more sort of manageable pieces. So one of the ways that it's often said is you can think of writing code as almost like writing a story or a narrative. And so having functions is kind of like having headings or paragraph markers. It's a way of dividing up your program. To this end, writing a program with functions is actually much easier to work with and easier to write. Also easier to collaborate with, share with others. So that's sort of a little bit of a motivation, but, but let's drill down a little bit more. One of the reasons that we really, really like to use functions is we can reuse code. This is sort of a often tenet of programmers, is rather than having the same code twice or even 10 times, if we can reuse that code, either by writing a variable that we can reuse or a loop, or now a function, these are ways of optimizing and making our, uh, our code a little bit easier to work with. Easier code that's uh, easier to work with, that is, is actually gonna result in overall better code with fewer errors. Think of it this way. If you're able to write code, and let's say that it has an error in it, well, if you use that code, that function, that block, all over your code, your program, um, obviously you're gonna have multiple errors. But if it's all tied to one central code block, then when you fix the error that's in the first code block, it changes it throughout your entire program. No copying, pasting, no typos, no issues like that. So that's one way to use for it. Another reason, kind of getting back to the idea of code being a story or a narrative, uh, is it's much easier to read code with functions. So, quick example. We've used print since the first day of class. We know print's really easy. It's a pretty simple function. You call it, it has some screen output. Uh, so that is a function, right? We sometimes call it a command, but, but now we can know the official term is that it is, is a function. And so imagine that every time you wanted to say print, you had to actually write the code that is used to generate the print operation. And so I wanted to show you what that looks like. So uh, we don't expect you to understand this. This is actually in uh, C, which is another programming language, but it kind of gives you the idea. Um, and so what's happening is, so as you look here, you can see that this is the print function. So this is how the original print function in Python is designed. And if you look at it, again, don't worry about the syntax at all because it's in a different language, but this is how it's built. There is a lot of code here. There's a lot of operations, um, functions, if statements, all of this is happening. And I'm gonna keep scrolling just a little bit until we finally get to the end of this code, which would be right here. So that entirety defines what the print function is. If you had to use that and copy that every time instead of calling print, it'd be very, very unwieldy. So let's get into how do we actually create a function? Okay, so we need to separate our understanding of building a function into two pieces. The first piece is called the function definition. This is what does the function do? So what is the actual set of operations, the algorithm or recipe, if you like, that need to happen when you perform this operation. This is the new part. This is the new part that we're learning today. The second part is actually what you've been doing already all semester. 
This is calling or using the function. So the new part is building our own function, but the part that you're already familiar with is once you've built that function, how do you actually get it to perform a duty? So I know that these are two kind of steps that seem sort of similar, so I wanna break it down in a really simple way that I, I find is really helpful to explain. So I enjoy coffee a lot. My, my students often hear these analogies. So if you wanted to make coffee, right, depending on whichever way you like to make coffee, if that's your thing, could be tea, whatever it is that you enjoy, right, there, there is a certain recipe. And so you grind some beans, you heat some water, you mix the two, you brew the cup, and then you're done, right? There's a whole process. Um, but what I always joke about is if I gave you all a piece of paper with these steps on it, and you looked at this piece of paper, and I said, how many cups of coffee do you have to drink right now? Right, the answer would be, what well, would be zero? Because you have a piece of paper with a recipe that describes how to make coffee, but you don't actually have any coffee. It's not until you perform those steps or execute the function, for example, that you have a delicious hot cup of coffee. So that's the two-step process that you have to keep in mind. First, we're going to define the function. This means we figure out what do we want the function to do. This is kind of in a general case. Then we actually call the function in a performance duty. All right, now let's get into the syntax. Now, when we go to actually define a function, what we do is we have this basic code block here. So we have the word def, which you may have seen before. So you may start to realize what we're doing here. And then you're gonna have the name of the function. Now, the function name is basically going to follow the same rules as variables. So you, know, you can't have it start with a number, no, no special characters, etc. So those sort of rules still apply here. And then we've seen this before. We've got a colon here, and then we're gonna define a block of code that's gonna be tabbed over. So a function is just also a code block, just like an if for a while. It's just doing a slightly different uh, process. And the new keyword here is def define. And for, for those of you that are brainstorming about this, you can think about where we've seen def so far. We'll come back to that. Okay, so here is a super basic sort of silly Python, uh, Monty Python related function. And so this is you define and you call the function spam. And you're always going to have parentheses, open close parentheses. Now, we'll eventually put some things in there. So for now, we're just going to leave them open. And then we're going to define what should happen when you call the function. So when you call the function, oops, when you call the function, you're simply going to print spam, spam, spam. That's it. That's, that, is a, that is a basic function. Silly, but nevertheless, a complete function. Let, let's think about a slightly more interesting version. Okay, here's a function called show weather. So what does it do? Well, it's going to create a variable called weather. It's going to ask the user what the temperature is. And then it does an operation where it looks and it says, ah, the weather is greater than 80. It prints out a certain message. Otherwise, it prints out a different message. So you could imagine that this could be a simple function that you could reuse anywhere you want in your code. Now, again, this is simply the definition, right? This is the key thing is this is simply defining the function. So now let's look at what it looks like to use the function. Well, again, you've already done this all semester so far. So what we have is you simply say the name of the function, open close parentheses. That's it. So key thing though, for now we have to treat this carefully you must define the function before you call it, okay? That, that, is a, that is a big thing. We'll have some ways of kind of uh, working our way around that a little bit, but for now, that's how we have to think about it. Also important, do note the, the parentheses at the end, okay? We'll, we'll treat those special in a second. We'll figure out how to put things in there, but for now, they have to be there. So what does it look like to call some functions in reality? Just like this. So if you say, this is my first function call, this is my second function call. This is my third function call. And so now if I were to run this code, right, three lines, what's gonna happen? Python is going to execute each operation. And so again, where does that come from? Well, if we go back a second, right, here's where those two functions are defined. So all that Python is doing is executing those 
code. All right. Now, something that we've seen before, if you remember back to uh, conditionals, uh, if statements and, and loops, is we talk about flow of control. Um, and so this is just sort of to keep in your mind, what does it look like when we're writing code? So imagine that we have, this is the main function. Now, if it were the, if your main code file, it would all be vertical. Uh, we kind of broke it out here horizontally, so it's a little visually easier to see. But this is just code in the file. So you run your program. You execute this my function. What does Python do? Python looks and it says, okay, I don't know what my function is, but did the user define something called my function? And it finds that you, in fact, did. So it pauses your program. So we'll put here that what's going to happen is your program pauses right here. Right? It then goes to where you defined the function, and it executes whatever call that's in there. So it's print inside. So it's going to print the word inside. Now, we have reached the end of this function. So now we're done here. Right? So what happens? We return back to where we left off. So we're able to stop our program and return back. And so that's what it means to say, what is the flow of control? The function pauses, executes the call where you defined it, comes back, and your program continues. Now, the last thing in this uh, video that I wanted to mention is this idea of namespaces. And this is something that's really important, and it, it's a little bit tricky to get, get our minds around it first. So let's imagine we have a file. And the whole file is called weather.py. And you can see this big uh, sort of beige yellow box is our, is our file, your code file. Now, inside function one, we're going to define a variable called air quality. We're going to set it equal to one. Now, we call air quality local. And when we say local, what we mean is that it is defined inside of function one. That's where it lives. Now, we can do another one, and we can say, OK, I'm going to define function 2, and I'm going to make a new local variable called ring. Again, we say that these are local to the function. And what we actually mean, and we'll see in a second, is that they can only be accessed inside of those two functions. So if you're outside of this orange, the orange boxes here that we've defined, right, like this, if you're outside of those boxes, you can't access those variables. So, give you an example. Here I am. Define function one, air quality, there's my variable. And now I say print ring. Well, Python looks at this orange box right here that we see that we've defined, right? And it says, well, hold up. There's no variable called ring. It's not local to this function. And so, therefore, it's going to give you an error. And the opposite is true. If you try to access air quality uh, from inside, function two, again, it's not local. So the key takeaway from this is that we have to be very careful about how we define variables. And so we often say that a function is kind of like a silo um, or an island or, or however you want to think about it. Or you know, the silly, silly way of thinking is just what, what happens there stays inside of there. And so uh, be careful when you try to access variables that are not local to a function. This is called generally scoped. Right? This is that more for a formal name for it, different interchangeable names. Um, you can just think of this as scope or namespaces. What variables exist and where can they be used? That's, that's really it. So again, variables defined inside of a function can only be used inside of that function.